are back with another segment in our blog series for IGTV. So today we're going over Jane's blog on the best auxiliaries for your back squat. So she's gonna go, be going over the main muscle groups you use in a back squat and what auxiliaries you can do to help improve them. So should we get started? Let's do it. So before we get started into the exercises, that we like to use for each muscle group. I wanna talk over a few key points to remember when choosing your auxiliaries. Number one, you, <laughs> choose, <laughs> you have your squat or your bench or your deadlift. This really goes for all three lifts. You do your bench and that hurts maybe, yeah, but your auxiliaries are supposed to kill your muscles, okay? So you make it as hard as possible and that's where you see your gains. That's the best way to do it. Also, along with that, number two, two, <laughs> um, match your auxiliaries to your deficiencies. Whatever you feel that your weakest point is in that lift, that's where you should be doing the most auxiliaries to strengthen that muscle. Huh, isn't that crazy? <laughs> number three, match the reps of your squat or any other main lift to actually backwards, sorry, match your auxiliaries to the main squat. So if you're doing eight reps of squat, you're gonna do eight reps of your auxiliary. Other than that, easy peasy. Really cool, perfect. Okay, so first muscle group we're gonna talk about is hamstrings. Here we have Annie ready to demonstrate a hamstring curl. With hamstrings, you're extending your legs and you're really gonna get a good burn in your hamstrings. And remember that glute bridge, so you're also working your glutes a little bit. Perfect. Okay, well now we're over here on the donkey. Um, it can be used for multiple different things, but today we're gonna use it for a glute ham race. So Annie's gonna demonstrate, you're going straight down, keeping your body straight, going as far as you can. It's really, if you're not amazing at these, which no one really, not many people are, you're not gonna get low. That's why she has the PVC pipe here to help her. And she's going down and then pulling yourself back up and you're gonna feel it a ton in your hamstrings. Okay, now we have Annie over here and she's doing a straight leg deadlift. Your knees are slightly bent, which is extremely important, and your back is very, very flat. Other than that, you'll feel in your hamstrings, but you shouldn't really feel it anywhere else. So now we're on two quads. Our first exercise or auxiliary for the quads is the split squat. You are gonna feel this both in your back and your front quad just differently, and then when you switch, you'll feel it the same. But the most important thing here is that your knee stays behind your toe in the front and you're trying to get to 90 degrees in both the front and the back knee. Okay, now we're over back on the squat rack. Annie is going to demonstrate a front squat. So really important in the front squat is that unlike the back squat, the load is in the front. So it's important to keep your core tight so your back is not rounding and you're staying upright and sitting back into your heels. Perfect. Okay, up next we have Annie doing the Bulgarian split squat. So her toe is back here and she's sitting back into her hips this way, but all of the weight is on that front foot and she's sitting back into her heel mid weight, or your weight is mid foot heel in this exercise. Now Annie is gonna demonstrate the reverse lunge. So she's doing great stepping back, her knee, keeping her knee behind her toe and getting down into that 90-90 position Otherwise, keeping your posture upright. Perfect. Okay, last but not least for our quads, and obviously there are more than I'm listing here, but Annie is doing a step up for us. She's doing a great job of just keeping her torso, her whole body upright. She's literally just stepping up and driving through with that back foot. This is also a really good one to like group together with a reverse squat, or lunge, reverse lunge, and you can add weight in any way you would like. Now we are on to glutes. Annie is here demonstrating a hip thrust with the barbell. Most people would have um, more weight on the bar, but we're just doing it to demonstrate, not trying to kill Annie today, but she's doing a great job of getting up into that flat position of her back through her knees and really thrusting with her hips and her glutes, not throwing her core or any other body part into the exercise. So here Annie is demonstrating a glute bridge, very similar to the hip thrust, but you're on the ground and it's just at a different angle, you're working your muscles a little bit differently. Here she is using the band, keeping tension at her knees, which is just going to burn your glutes more. And if you wanted to make it even more difficult, you could hold the glute bridge and then one more step is pulsing. 
testing the band out while keeping your toes or your feet flat on the ground. It's super important to keep it flat on the ground. Otherwise, have fun with these. Here we have Annie demonstrating the lateral band walks. Obviously, maybe not obviously, but here at Pure Fitness, they are very much a favorite of ours that we use multiple times every day with our clients. And you're keeping that weight back, sitting back into your hips, laterally moving, putting pressure on the muscles out to the side. Now we are on to core. Core is super important to your squat because the barbell is up on your shoulders, your legs are doing the work, and your core connects this kinetic chain through your body. So here we have Annie doing the dead bug. As she's extending her legs, she's doing a great job of keeping her core engaged so her back does not arch and putting all of that weight into her core so her core is doing the work. <laughs> okay, now Annie is the plank. This is a great one to isometrically work your core muscles. It is really important that you don't let your back dip. You're keeping a flat back through turning your pelvis in and keeping your core engaged. Here Annie is doing a normal elbow plank, but a plank is one that you can really, really get creative with. Up on your hands, you can do elbow touches, shifting, all kinds of things. Okay, now Annie is into a V-sit. She's isometrically, again, holding this lift, keeping her core engaged, her knees up towards her chest, and just holding. Again, you can add like a bicep curl, any type of press, an extension of the leg, super fun. Oh, there she goes. <laughs> but otherwise, it's a super simple, great core exercise. Okay, well, there you have it. We went over exercises that focus on your quads, your hamstrings, your glutes, and your core. Obviously, there are a ton more of exercises that you can do, but these are some of my favorite, some that we use often in the gym here. But other than that, these exercises are also ones that I've used in my own powerlifting, powerlifting career and that I feel have helped me the most increase my squat numbers. She's strong, so it <laughs> works. <laughs> so for more, make sure you look on our blog. We will have another one about deadlift and bench, right? Yep. Coming up soon. And just like for more content. Yeah. Thanks guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Bye.